Good morning or afternoon or evening, wherever and whenever you're watching this. This is going to be as quick a video as possible explaining MST configuration on a Cisco Catalyst switch. You look at my website, I have a couple test case scenarios set up, but I had a question in regards to a customer at one time where the question was, in an MST region for all the switches, do all the switches require the VLANs actually be defined in them? Well, that's a good question because some places have security requirements and you might have like say five switches but only two switches let's say uh, uh, actually start over you have five switches tw uh, 20 VLANs and two of the switches out of the five only require two VLANs and they don't want to define anything else because it's a security measure and they're not and they're not running some uh, Mickey Mouse protocol like VTP so which is a good thing I, I hate VTP so and most people do actually it's a good question, and it prompted, and it doesn't really. Uh, there's not a lot of material that goes in depth, or even is very clear about how that works. Well, the the funny thing to think about MST is this: an MST with the internal instance, so it's instance zero, is actually the instance that it sends and it, that it contains, or actually sends and receives the BPDUs that contain the MST extension, which has the mandatory fields that must match on all switches and the mandatory fields that must, that must match, coincidentally, can show up here. Well, let's take a look at what actually shows up. Your name, which is case sensitive, your revision, and then these guys. So all switches in a region must share the same case sensitive name. So capital WPT is not the same as lowercase WPT. Revision zero, You'll hear some argument on this one. Some say you're not. It doesn't matter. Some say it does. I like to go the administratively configured route and make them all the same. It doesn't hurt. And then your VLAN instance to VLAN or instance to VLAN or VLAN to instance mappings. So as you see, I have two user-defined VLAN or user-defined instances, but there's three configured as it says right there. Well, instance zero is always present and it's always going to count as an instance, even though it's not user modifiable. So as you'll notice here, I have those, but I don't have them defined. So let's get down to the gritty here. Let me pull up Wireshark. I've made some captures for you to look at. First capture. This capture has the VLANs configured, so the instances are mapped. So this was built based on this configuration. with uh, the name at WPT, the revision at zero, and these instances user defined and mapped. Let's take a look at something here. Let me pull up this. Uh, it's just uh, making some notes here. All right. So as you see in your typical frame that you capture, you got your typical spanning tree stuff. So you've got your protocol version, you've got your BPDU flags you know, that are set and all that jazz. You know, your, your root port identifier, the cost, obviously we're on the root bridge uh, based off uh, root path cost zero. But we're interested in this guy, the MST extension. In here, you'll see the config name, WPT, which matches up to this guy here. You'll see config revision zero, which matches up to this guy here. And check this out, the MST config digest. It's a big old number, so let's go ahead and do this, the last, uh, let's, let's do the last eight. So we'll do um, A644, let's uh, write that down. So we'll do A644. Two five C4. Okay. This digest is calculated from the MST configuration table. And coincidentally, this is actually kind of giving you a glimpse at that table. There's a link on my page that'll actually take you to a real deep dive. I highly suggest you read it. It's boring and dry, but it it lets you know what's going on. You'll be a lot, a lot better engineer when it comes to MST and spanning tree for that. But basically, these guys are what matter. But notice, once again, VLANs aren't defined. So you're probably asking, well, I mean, what happens if uh, you define the VLANs? Does that configuration change? Well, let's find out. Now, once again, 
even though they're not defined, the instance mapping matters, and that instance mapping is what generates this hash or this config digest, which is which is what the switches will use regardless of where they have the VLANs defined or not. In fact, it could be a switch that just has one VLAN defined, of, let's say the 20 we talked about earlier, and or, or the 15 we talked about earlier, whichever it was, I can't remember. I got just one VLAN defined. But as long as you have the instances mapped correctly, that digest is the same, and they'll work just fine. So we, we, we've documented this because that's a running, uh, that, that's, a, that's a dump or a TCP dump that was ran on this configuration. So on my website here, you know, let's go ahead. So we did this one already. Let's just go ahead and say, let's, let's define uh, VLAN 754 first. All right, so we're going to show VLAN. We see it's defined and show in trunk. As we see, it is uh, allowed tagged on port channel one. For good measure, we'll copy the configuration. Nothing's changed there. So let's look at a packet capture from what happened. Let's pull up Notepad. Look at that nothing changed. We defined one of the two VLANs and nothing changed. Second scenario on my website has me both VLANs defined. So let's go ahead and define 877. Nothing's changed there. But let's go ahead and let's look at the capture. Look at that, nothing, nothing changed. So the answer to your questions, or even my question I had at one time, in a single region, do all the VLAN, do all the VLANs have to be defined on every switch? The answer on a Cisco Catalyst is no, because if you look at this, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't recalculate the hash, but that, at least from what I've read about 802.1s or 802.1q-2005, is that the VLANs being defined don't matter as a item that is uh, calculated in the hash. It's just the instance to VLAN or VLAN to instance mapping that matters. Some vendors, I've scoured the internet, some vendors say you have to have the VLANs defined. Even if you have the mapping, it doesn't matter. The VLAN better be defined on there. Let me say this, and then I like Juniper. But about four or five years ago, I was deploying a set of EX4200 switches that were connecting to EX3200s at top of rack. The 4200s were core for this company I was working for. And we had the mappings were there, but the VLANs, but not all the VLANs were defined on the EX3200 top of rack switches. We come to find out the moment we define the VLANs, which included having their names be exactly the same, case sensitive, it worked. That time didn't dig into the, to the uh, config digest, but that's what worked. So apparently the VLANs actually living there were part of that configuration or part of that hash. So I don't know if maybe there was some weird mishap in our network. I don't know. It was under the gun. We had to make it work. And this could have been a one-off, but once again, I'm not just Juniper. I have run into other vendors where their documentation said it had to be there, but with the Cisco Catalyst, not the case, apparently. But let's go ahead and let's make a change. Let's say you have a uh, uh, let's say um, there's a um, junior network engineer. He comes in and he's looking through this config, and he's like, "Wait, um, you know, let's just uh, you know, let's just say let's clean this up here. So no VLAN." 754, no VLAN 877, all right. So they're not there. So let's say, you know, this, the junior comes in, he's looking at the configuration, he's like, uh, wait, I see instance two, but I don't see any VLANs. There's nothing here. So he just takes it upon himself at the end of the day, and he's like, well, we don't need it. We don't need instance two. 
the VLANs aren't there. So as you've noticed though, do take note, they moved up to instance zero, the internal instance. If you were to turn Spanning Tree on blindly, all your VLANs would map to instance zero. Terrible idea, don't do it. Uh, go read about why it's a terrible idea. So on a packet capture now, now let's take a look at that packet capture. What does that look like? Aha, look at that. The digest has changed. Even though nothing else has changed, but the mapping, he took that off. Well, the digest is different. So let's go ahead and record the digest real quick so we don't lose track. We're gonna do the last eight as always. So we're gonna do Bravo nine eight. So we're gonna do uh, Foxtrot Bravo nine eight two F forty. There we go. So you know, let's say some. Let's say on VLAN seven five four, people are calling. They're like, "Whoa, something's broken. This has to get fixed." You discover what happened. You call the junior back and say, uh, "Dude, you gotta fix that. That was uh, that was meant that way. You're obviously gonna need to learn more." Whatever. Maybe it was worse. Maybe better. Who knows? So he goes in, he does instance two, VLAN 754. All right, he's like, oh yeah, there, there, there it is, perfect. So we copy it as a show span. All right, so he's like, it's there, yeah, sure. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what that capture looks like. It's different again. But let's just say that was the only VLAN affected and no one else was really having problems. I mean, who knows? Maybe it's just for some bizarre reason they stopped complaining. Whatever it is. Let's go ahead and record the last eight of that, which is going to be Charlie Alpha Zero Foxtrot 65 Bravo 9. So you come in, you're like, all right, he screwed it up. So you're going to go back in, fix the problem, or maybe checkpoint, roll back your config, who knows. Uh, but whatever, we're just doing this to show you. One thing to take note here is you don't need an add or remove keyword like on a trunk. Um, every time you do an instance to VLAN or instance whatever VLAN, it, it, it adds. If you want to remove a VLAN, it's a no instance number VLAN uh, to remove the entire instance. As you saw, no instance, and it clears it. So now we see we're back to our original config right here. So we show that our VLANs are mapped appropriately, and the names are right, the revision's right. All right. So we're going to go ahead and exit appropriately. And we're going to save the config. Whoops. All right. And then let's look at the config. So as we see here, we've got the names correct, the revisions correct, and the mappings are good. Awesome. Now let's go take a look at that capture now that it's all fixed. Hey, look at that. Look familiar? Now, if you read that link, you'll understand why that's the same and why it reverted back. So it has to do a lot with interoperability that there's sort of a base that's calculated against. But nonetheless, you, you now see that the only thing that matters is the instance to VLAN mapping, not that VLANs are defined on a Cisco Catalyst switch. Now, I hope this has been informative for you. If there's any recommendations or if I screwed up, or if you need more clarification, please leave, a, um, obviously, definitely leave uh, feedback. Uh, I ask you to keep it nice so we all learn from each other because that's how we grow in this field. Everyone learns from each other. And uh, if you want to chat, feel free to chat. But let me know if there's anything I can do to make these easier, better, or if I screwed up, please let me know so I can fix that. And uh, I hope this is going to help you out. It helped me out a lot. And once again, to summarize, the question at the beginning was, in an MST region, do all switches need to have the VLANs defined in the VLAN database? The answer is no. The only thing that matters in an MST configuration to match so that all switches in a region are cooperating and there's no micro segmentation is, quite simply, you need to make sure that your configuration name, your revision number, and your instance to VLAN mapping is the same because that's how this digest is calculated. And to show you here, 
it's really as simple as making sure that, once again, case sensitive name, revision number, and these guys are the same on all switches, regardless of the VLANs being defined. As you see here, they're not defined. So, hope that's been informative for you, and uh, feel free to leave any feedback or whatnot, and more will come. I'll have a new one coming out here soon for a Nexus, so you get to see this from the Nexus perspective, running NXOS on Nexus 5000s and 3000 series switches. Hope you have a great night, day, evening, whatever, and uh, we'll see you again. Bye.